I want to read you one verse here, and then I want to go to De- Deuteronomy, and we'll try to tie all this up together and, uh, and read you a verse there. But we read in 1 Chronicles chapter number 28 and verse number 20, this verse, And David said to Solomon, his son, Listen now, be strong and of good courage and do it. Do what? Build the temple. Do the work. And do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Bless it, I pray. Help us now to rightly divide the word of truth. God, forgive me of my sins. There are many. I pray, God, that you forgive me and cleanse me. And God, as I stand behind this pulpit, God, a vessel, Lord, uh, desiring, God, to be filled with the Spirit of God and desiring, Father, to carry the Word of God, I pray, God, that you, uh, Lord, move me out of the way. And God, I pray the Spirit of God would move in and take over. Help us say nothing contrary to the will of God, but that all we'd say would be to thy glory. God, we must have you. God, I'm helpless. God, without your help. And I pray, God, you'd help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. So we notice these verses about being strong and of good courage. That God, that he says, be strong and of good courage and fear not because he will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work. Uh, all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. What, what David is telling Solomon, he said, don't be afraid to work. God is going to use you to finish the work. I want to ask you a question by the title of our message this morning. I want to ask you a question. Have you got what it takes? Have you got what it takes to serve the Lord in this day that we live in? Now, friend, I, my studying as of late in the Word of God and in the world leads me to believe that we are about, as believers, if Jesus don't come first, we are about to face persecution as you and I have never known before. And I've talked to people, and people are so lackadaisical. I mean, they seem like, well, it's going to be all right. Everything's going to go along as normal, and we're asleep of the things of the world. Don't know what's going on. I'm trying to tell you, we better wake up. It's going to take something out of you and me to stand for God in these last days that we live in. All this mess that's in the world today, all the corruption that's going on, all the evil that abounds in the world, and it's getting worse and worse, and all the terrorism that's going on, all the, all the corruption in our government, all the corruption in our society, and all the evil and the violence, and no sense of morals, no sense of direction, People, I'm telling you, listen to me now. We better wake up and get ready for what's ahead of us. And have you got what it takes to suffer persecution for the sake of the Lord? He said, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. He said that uh, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Have you got what it takes to finish the work? God said he won't fail us. God said he won't forsake us. God said he'll be with us. But have we got the courage from God in our heart when it comes to the time to stand and serve him? What if it comes to our church? What if it comes to our neighborhood? What if they come, what if the government, the law enforcement comes to our church and comes in here and says, you cannot preach but certain things out of the Word of God. Am I going to have the courage? Is that Have I got it in me to stand up and say, I don't care what you say, I'm preaching the Word of God. By the help of God, I want to be that way. I want to have that that strength about me and that much God about me to look him in the eye and say, you don't tell me what I'm going to preach. Amen. But it may come to that. And, And people look at you like, oh, preacher, you're just trying to scare everybody. No, I'm trying to warn you. I wouldn't be worth 10 cents If I, as your pastor, didn't get up here once in a while and tell you, you better be ready to serve the Lord and do whatever it takes. You better have some guts about you. There's this big old fella coming to the store yesterday, and uh, and, uh, here's how crazy I am. 
Now, when I'm talking about a big old boy, there's nobody in here that it wouldn't take two of uh, to match him. He's a big old boy. And uh, I've got a new employee, and it was her husband. And uh, he stood back there and talked, and I thought, I'm going to have me some fun. I don't know this man from nobody. I have never, don't, don't have a clue who he is. But somebody said, that's her husband. I said, you watch. And I walked back there, and I got right there, and I said, now I'm telling you. And he ain't fat. And I walked up, and I said, this man bothering you just as serious as I could be. She looked up, yeah, he's just harassing me. I said, buddy, I took, started taking my apron off. I said, I reckon I'm going to have to drag you out the door. <laughs> and, of course, thank goodness he had a sense of humor about him and didn't take me serious because there would have been me no dragging him out the door. I might have took a wheelbarrow if I could have knocked him down and wheeled him out. But, I, but listen, I did that, and I, you know, all in good fun. But I'm telling you something, there may, there may come a day when that, in all seriousness, when it comes to standing for God, we may have to face those that say, you better hush or I'm taking you out. Now, preacher, do you really believe that? I certainly do. We're not above persecution. We've had it so, so right in our country for all these years. We've had it so easy in our country for all these hundreds of years that I'm afraid God's people have gotten soft. Now, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you, I'm afraid we've gotten soft and afraid to take a little criticism, afraid to take a little, uh, you know, a, a little uh, ribbon or whatever you want to call it for our faith in what we believe. How many of you believe you're saved this morning? Stand up. If you believe you're born again in the grace of God, stand to your feet. Amen. Now, listen, friend, you named the name. You called it right there yourself. You're a child of God. What are you going to do about it? You sit down. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to stand like that when it comes time to stand? Are you willing to get in the face of the enemy and tell them, by God's grace, I'm not going to deny my Savior? Amen. Now, it's easy to say that. I've thrown a lot around in my mind over the last few days. And I've looked at a lot of the things that go on that have, have gone on in history concerning how people, how Christians have been persecuted. You say, yeah, I'll stand for God. Let me tell you something. What if they've got one of, your, one of your children or what if they've got your wife or your husband and they're looking at you and telling you, if you don't deny Christ, I'm going to kill them. What are you going to do? Nobody ever thinks about that. Nobody ever thinks, well, yeah, I'll stand for God, but what if they've got your young and your child and they come to you and say, all right, I'm going to kill your wife. What are you going to do? Are you going to deny Christ? By the help of God, I don't, I'm not even asking you that question, brother. I'm just putting it to you. By the help of my mama the other day. My mama's in her 80s. She ain't going to be around a whole lot long. She'll be listening to this, so she knows I'm telling the truth. She, she's ready to go, though. Amen. And I was talking to my mama the other day, and she said, Gary, she said, by the help of God, I don't care what they do. I'm not going to deny him. Hallelujah. She said, God will give me grace no matter what they do to me. I am not going to deny my Savior. Hallelujah. Have you got what it takes to have that kind of faith in your life and mean it? David told Solomon, he said, God will see you through. He'll not fail you, nor will he forsake you until you fill in the, finish the work of building the house of God. You and I have got a job to do. Every one of us here has got a job to do. We have got a work to finish. We ain't building a temple, but we've got a work to finish. we got young people in here today, and I love these youngins. I'm telling you what, I love these youngins from the teeny tiniest, and I guess that's you here this morning, amen, to the greatest, biggest one. You're all youngins. But these teenagers, I love you with all my heart. You're going to face things that this preacher never faced. You're going to face things that I've never seen in my lifetime. But by the help of God, if you'll trust the same God that I trust, God will not fail you nor forsake you. I'm the old man in the crowd. You listen to this preacher. You young as listen to this preacher. God in heaven will not fail you. He will not forsake you. He will go through to the very end. He'll be with you. Preacher, how do you know that? The Bible, hallelujah to God, the Bible tells me so. 
He will not fail me, nor will he forsake me. You write that down on your calendar. Will, have you got what it takes to stand for the Lord? Now, I have not got to an, an induction. I have not got to a point. I don't know where I'm going, but amen, have you got what it takes? You throw that thought around in your mind for just a little bit. Have you got what it takes? Now, over in the book of Deuteronomy, God told Joshua, because Moses had died or, or was about to pass on, and he could not lead the children of Israel over Jordan. Moses led the children of Israel uh, from the time he was about 80 years old. He led the children of Israel, and he led them around in the wilderness because that was his appointed thing to do because of sin in the life of Israel and of Moses. But God protected them for 40 years in the desert. God took care of them. God protected them. When it come time for them to enter Canaan's land, Moses could not go. But Joshua was the man of the hour. And he was the man that was to take the children of Israel across to the promised land, to the Canaanite. Now, I've heard many people say from time to time that Canaan is a type of heaven and going across the river Jordan is a type of crossing over <coughs> into heaven and that's not so I'm sorry if you feel that way but it's not so because Canaan is not a type of heaven see the Canaanites were wicked evil vile people and it was a land of fighting it was a land of war and it was the land that's still under the curse heaven is going to be a better place than Canaan hallelujah to God it's not a land of the curse it's not a land of wars it's not a place of fighting heaven is a place of contentment and, and for the child of God but it was a better place than wandering in the wilderness and it was a place that God had promised the Israelites that they could have and all they had to do is go possess it. To right, Brother Venus? All they had to do is go, go take it. Now we find they made a lot of mistakes. They made a lot of blunders, but it come down to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number 6. <clears throat> Be strong and of good courage. Have you got what it takes this morning? Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go but with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Again, the promise of the word of God not to fear what's ahead of you because God's already been there. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm about to get beside myself. I don't know what's down the road ahead of me, but hallelujah to God. I know God's already there. Amen. He's already been there. I'm facing nothing that he don't know about. Nothing. Ten years from now, if Jesus hadn't come back first, I have no idea where I'll be, what I'll be doing for the Lord. Amen. I don't know. You don't know. But if we're right here at the same place, amen, I hope by the help of God we're doing better than we are now. Amen? Amen. And don't get mad at me. I hope I'm doing better than 10 years from now at preaching than I am right now. Amen, Brother Max? I hope I'm living closer to the Lord. I hope I'm serving the Lord with, with greater uh, vigor. I hope that I've got more enthusiasm for serving the Lord than I do now. Amen. Let me tell you something. God already knows what's down ahead of me 10 years from now. God knows. He's been there. He's done that. He knows that. He said, I will not fail you nor forsake you. You know what he, who they told that? He gave that promise to. He gave it to Moses. He gave it to Joshua and many others in the Scripture. But guess what? It's my promise, hallelujah, to God. He says, I will not fail thee nor will I forsake thee. I will go with you. I will be there. And one thing for sure, my friend, you can trust God. You can believe that what God says he'll do, God is going to do just exactly that. Amen. Have you got what it takes? Y'all looking at me like, what is wrong with that preacher? There ain't a thing wrong with me. I'm just asking a question, and I wish you'd look at me like, say, amen, preacher. I want to have what it takes. Amen. Have you got what it takes? Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be, he's make, Moses is making a charge to Joshua and he's telling them in front of the whole congregation of Israel he tells him this Joshua be strong and of good courage for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it 
Joshua, you are the man to lead these people over into the land of inheritance that's been promised. He just told him, he ain't going to fail you. He's not going to forsake you. He's telling him in front of all the people of Israel, you're going to have to lead them through. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. God is giving instruction that he's the one to do the job. Now, we got young people in here. We got older folks in here. But there's not a person in here this morning that God don't have work for you to do. I'm hoping he'll call some of these young boys in here. I'm hoping he'll, he'll clean them up and call them to preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm hoping he'll put the preach on them and they'll call them to preach the word of God and they'll be a better preacher than I ever thought about being. I want to tell you, young folks, if you're a young man and you think God's dealing with you to preach, amen, you preach, amen. I've heard people say you do everything you can not to preach. I have people tell me that. You do everything you can not to preach. And if you still like you still need to preach, amen, you preach. I'm telling you, if you feel the tug of God on your heart, no matter if you're two or 102, and you feel a tug of God on your heart to preach the word of God, I'm telling you, don't run from it, run to it. Hallelujah, you're happy. That running from preaching is a, oh, that's nonsense. It's miserable. I've been there and done that. It's, it ain't no fun. You get in trouble. You get wore out from from, from having to run from God and getting beatings all the time from God till you submit, and then you, when you submit, hey man, I ain't never been happier in my life than I get to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Hey man. Now I regret I wasted a few years running from the call to preach the word of God. And then I, I hate I missed a few years out because I was a little timid about getting in front of people. Would you ever think it? I ain't never been happier. The bigger the crowd, the better. Hey, man, I wish I had a million. Hey, man, sometimes I wish I had a national voice. I ain't afraid to proclaim the gospel. God is good. Hey, man. Amen. You young people, if there's someone here, God, hey, it may be some of you young ladies may cause you to marry a young preacher. Hey, man, stick with him. Stay with the stuff. Like my wife has done for all these years, she's stayed with me. She's backed me up. She's encouraged me. When I've been on the bottom, amen, she's been, she's been there to pick me up and help me out, amen. I love my wife. I could never do what I'm doing without the help of my, without the help of my good wife, amen. And sometimes she kicks me and says, you, you better watch yourself when you're preaching. You don't need to be doing that. I listen, amen. 90% of the time, I bet you I can go back through her Bible right now most of the time or 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 somewhere where she made notes of every message I've ever preached. Amen. She didn't know I knew that, but I watched her do that a lot of times. I thought she's playing in church. And I said, what are you doing coloring in church? She said, right, here's what you've been preaching on. I said, have at it. Amen. But it may be that some of you young ladies, God, God, called, God put you with somebody, some man that's going to preach the gospel. Amen. And you notice I ain't said nothing about women preachers. Amen. I ain't got a thing against women. You know that. You know I love you with all my heart, but amen, they're not called to preach the word of God. They're called to do a lot of things, amen, but preaching is of the man of God, amen, and if God puts some of you ladies in a, in a household with a preacher and he's called to preach the word of God, amen, stay with him to, and be a help to him, be an encouragement to him. It may be that some of you young ladies, God says to you, I want you to go to Papua New Guinea and I want you to witness and be a missionary. Now, hopefully he'll give, a man, give you a man to go along with you. But if you don't, amen, go on by yourself, amen. Now, preacher, I would never do that or tell anybody to do that. But when, I get, when she gets back from one of her trips, I'm going to have Margaret Stringer here at the church. She'll tell you all about being a, a lady missionary in a foreign field uh, where uh, no white men exist. There are very few of them. She decided she's going to go on to serve the Lord and do the will of God. Amen. And she went and she spent many years in Erinjai. Erinjai. Amen. Have you got what it takes? Young people, let me ask you something. Have you got what it takes to serve the Lord? Have you got what it takes? Are you a little timid when he comes around your friends at school? Huh? I know peer pressure is a terrible thing. I know, it'll, I know the devil will use that against you. 
and he, and he, he may, you know, he, he may tell you to witness to one of your friends. He may say, why don't you ask him if they're saved? The hardest words that will come out of your mouth, young lady, is if God tells you to witness to some of your friends, you get them along somewhere and say, do you know the Lord? But if you'll start out with do, you know the Lord will come easy. Amen. Because if you'll do what God says to do, God will help you and God will bless you. Amen. Hardest thing to do sometimes is witness. Hardest thing to do sometimes is witness for the Lord because the devil don't want you to do it. Do you think the devil likes it when a young man or young woman, a young boy or young girl gets saved? No. You know why? Because there's a possibility they might lead somebody else to Jesus. But do not be intimidated by the devil. Amen. Do not be intimidated by the ways of this world. Have enough guts about you to stand. You have, have you got what it takes? Have you got what it takes? Oh, my friend today, I hope and pray that you've got what it takes. Now, that's my verses. I've done preached to you about 20 minutes. I don't know what I'm going to do, but preach a little longer. Amen. Have you got what it takes? Let me give you a couple of things real quick and we'll be done. The land of Canaan was a land of Canaanites. The Canaanites were wicked and evil and vile people. They had many different gods. They had many different idols. Among of them were Baal and Dagon and they, they worshipped a lot of false gods. They believed in child sacrifice. And I can't imagine sacrificing a child. Can you? But they would do that. They would burn them on the altar. They found remains of charred uh, youngins where they had burned them on the altar and sacrificed to their false gods. That's how depraved man can get. And friend, we've been living in a society where life is not, is not considered valuable any longer. I'm telling you, we're living in an evil day. Have you got what it takes to stand? They were going to go in there among those Canaanites. God said, wipe them all out. Now, they failed to do that, and it's caused trouble ever since. But let me tell you something. What God gives you to do, have courage and believe that God will help you to do it. God will help you to do it. Amen. But it's only by God's help. It is not in your strength and not in your power and not in your might. The land that we live in today is getting more evil by the day. You ought to be encouraged that the, the worse it gets, the closer we are to coming to the Son of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'd love to hear Brother Reggie Sadler come tonight and sing, but amen, I don't, wanna, I don't want one minute for you to think one minute that if the rapture takes place today, I'm not going to be a happy man. Hallelujah to God. Amen. But if Jesus don't get, come back for another year, for another day, for another week, have you got courage to stand? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're living in a land of evil, and it's going to get worse. You have what it takes, number one, to take a stand in spite of the ungodly laws that are being passed in our land. Huh? I throw a lot of things around in my mind. Suppose they enacted a law which it's coming. Now this business of sodomite in their nation has gotten way out of hand by a minority of people. And you know why? It's not a majority of people that are for uh, gays and lesbians going and getting a marriage license and getting married. It's, not, it's by a minority of people. And you know why? Because they got big mouths. And you know what's wrong? We ain't got big enough mouths. Amen. We don't stand up enough for what's right. Amen. We sat by and say, well, let somebody else do it. Fold your arms. Let somebody else do it. Who else is going to do it? If you and I don't stand for what's right, who's going to? Have you got what it takes to stand? What if they come and tell this preacher, what are you going to do with me? If they come and tell this preacher, look, you're going to have to start performing. Uh, I hate to even use the word gay because gay means happy. And that word has been very misconstrued, but... If a couple of sodomites come in here, watch what the Bible calls them, and they want to get married, you're going to have to marry them. I'm going to say, bull hogwash, I'm not going to do it. We're going to take you to jail. Lock me up. What are we going to do? You say, preacher, that's nonsense. No, it's not. It very well could happen. Not here in the mountains of western North Carolina. Hey, they're all around this little church. What if they come to me? I'm going to tell them no. I about come to the 
Turn that off just a minute, Frank. Turn me off just a second. Well, I got enough problems without inviting anybody else to condemn me and tell me how bad I am for even thinking such a thought. And if you feel that way, amen, come talk to me about it. I'll explain it all to you. But I am not. I am not going to marry. And I, I'll sure get some flack. But I'm not going to marry two men together. <laughs> if I had to, I'd throw up all over them for us all over with. And by the way, I'm against sodomy. I'm, I'm against that. But I'm telling you what, them people got a soul just like you and I do. And if they get right with God, amen, they could be a big benefit. But if they don't get right with God, they're going to perish and go to hell in their wickedness. God destroyed at least two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, for the sin that's being rampant in our nation today. It's rampant. It's everywhere. I see it every day in Black Mountain. I see it. I, I, that, ooh, I can't even tell it without getting sick about it. But I've seen them all locked up arm in arm and, and lip to lip right there in the grocery store. Amen. And not men and women either. Now, hey, you say, preacher, I'm telling you, friend, we're living in an evil, corrupt day. Have you got what it takes to stand? We've been, we've become, listen, we've become so accepting of the lifestyle of the unbeliever. Not just sodomites, but even, you know, even the drug crowd, all of we've become acceptable of it. And the crowd that's shacked up living together, well, it's all right. No, it's not. Never has been. Never will be. So, so you won't think I'm just picking on, on the, the sin of sodomy this morning, living in fornication, living in adultery, living outside the, the will of God is never acceptable, my friend. Unfaithfulness to God is never acceptable whether it be that you don't serve the Lord and do the will of God or whether you're not faithful to the house of God, unfaithfulness is never acceptable. Have you got what it takes to stand? In spite of our ungodly laws, in spite of, number two, in spite of, I'm about through, in spite of persecution, which I've already preached to you about, the persecution of my religious speech. Amen? My religious speech. Now, I've got all the freedom in the world, and after this service is over with you, some of you might, might want to ride me out on a rail, but I've got the freedom to stand and preach to you what thus saith the word of God. By the help of God, I'm going to do it. Amen. And smile all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you got what it takes to stand? And number three, have you got what it takes to stand in the face of religion? Now, this business about Islam. I might as well just cover it all since, I, since I'm here. This business of Islam, these Muslims that are infiltrating our country. You say, well, I don't see many of them. Yeah, you won't until it's too late. And they're doing their best to enact their religion upon me and upon you. And if it comes to that day when they tell you that you will obey Sharia law or we will kill you, have you got what it takes to obey God rather than man? Have you got what it takes? In the face of religious persecution, have you got what it takes? No matter who it comes from, whether it's Islam or whether it's some other religion, have you got what it takes to stand for God and against the religious entities of this world that will try to destroy your faith in God. By the help of God, I'm going to stand. Closing Ephesians 6, chapter, thir uh, chapter 6, verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand therefore. Have you got it in you? Have you got what it takes? to stand in this evil day. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. We've done our best. Lord, I pray that you give me courage and make me bold. And God, in, face, in spite of persecution, Lord, I pray that you give us courage and help us, Lord, to stand for what's right in this evil day. And Lord, having done all to stand, God, let us just stand and be thy servant. And Lord, for everyone that's here this morning, give us courage. 
Make us bold. Stand for truth in Jesus' name. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. There'll be someone here this morning that don't know the Lord. I wonder, why are you going to go to hell?